My name is Sabrina Romanov, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build an AI powered Zapier automation that basically takes an article or blog or discussion that you find interesting, sends it to ChatGPT to automatically write a LinkedIn post, write a tweet, and then append the output to a Google Sheets for you to look over and edit before you publish to your social media platforms. So the point of this AI powered automation is to be able to, you know, browse the web naturally and then just one click on a Chrome extension to to get a LinkedIn post and tweet from something interesting that you found online. So, so here's what the automation looks like in Zapier. Uh, I'll dive into it in more detail, but first I just want to show you how it all works. Let's go to an interesting article. Uh, for example, Paul Graham's new essay, which was on the top of Hacker News yesterday. And here I have a Zapier Chrome extension up here pinned in my Chrome. I'm going to click on that and you can see zaps I've made. We're going to use this one article to social media post. All I have to do is click send and that's it. And what's happening now in the background is uh, Zapier is basically scraping this web page, truncating the text and we send it to ChatGPT and then it writes uh, an article for LinkedIn as well as a tweet. Then we head over to our Google Sheet and wait for the post and tweet to be written and it's going to be automatically pushed here. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then let me just remove this highlighting. Accidentally turned everything yellow. Uh, so you can see here the title of the post is about uh, stubbornness versus persistence. The URL, the date is today. And then here's the LinkedIn post. Uh, if you're wondering why it's in this format, I usually like my LinkedIn post in a nice, well-structured format. But when we dive into the prompt, you can, you can change all that if you don't like uh, this bullet point format. And then here's the tweet. So that all happened with a click of a button. And really the main use case here is you find interesting stuff. You're like, oh, this might be valuable to my clients or my audience. And so literally you just open this Chrome extension, one click, and then it populates it in a Google Sheet. Uh, and the reason why I put it all in a Google Sheet is because I do like to add you know, my own thoughts, edit the output a bit before I publish on social media platforms. But you can very well imagine with Zapier, you can extend it so that it publishes automatically to your social media platforms if that's the workflow you want. All right, so now let's talk about how to build the Zapier automation. So the first step is we wanna set up the Zapier Chrome extension. So open a new tab in Google, Google search Zapier Chrome extension setup, and then click on the first results, how to use the Zapier Chrome extension. The first step is to install it. So click on the Zapier Chrome extension page URL. It's gonna take you to the Chrome web store. You'll wanna click add to Chrome. Obviously I have it installed already. Uh, once you have added it to Chrome, you're good to go there. The next step is optional. I like to just pin the extension to the Chrome toolbar. It just saves me a click. So here, uh, find Zapier and then pin it so it's easily accessible. And then try opening it up. You should see something like this. You won't have this Zap yet because we haven't created it, but you'll see a bunch of suggested Zaps here, as well as an option to enable natural language actions, uh, which are AI powered actions directly within the Chrome extension. And you can also create a Zap directly from this Chrome extension, which is cool. Okay, so now once you have the Zapier Chrome extension installed, let's close that out. Begin a new Zap in Zapier. And the first step is going to be this Zapier Chrome extension app. And the event is a new push. So just like you saw here, when you click send in the Chrome extension, that's the new push that triggers this workflow automation. And then go ahead to trigger. Um, these input fields are optional, but you can imagine, uh, for example, you might want to be specific about the point of view from which the LinkedIn post and tweet are written. And so you could imagine ha having additional input for, you know, I want to focus on this specific angle for my LinkedIn post, something like that. Okay, so once you're done doing all that, go ahead and test that step. Uh, it should look something like this, where you are extracting the, the tab title, the URL timestamp. All right, now add another step in your Zap and then look for the web parser by Zapier app. So it should look like this when you search for it, web parser by Zapier. Go ahead and click that. And then the only event is parse web page. That's the only option. Go to action and you'll want to fill out the URL to parse. So we want to take the URL from the previous step from the Chrome extension. So that's tab URL and then change the content output to plain text. Um, it can also still work in HTML and Markdown. I just find it a bit easier to parse the logs and history if it's plain text. 
set continue on failure to false. This is because we don't want to be sending requests to ChatGPT to write content if uh, the Zap automation has failed to parse the article or blog post. And click continue. And then here in the test step, it should look something like this. So the data in gives you the URL, continue on failure false content type text. And then the data out should look something like this. So right now this is just parsing zapier.com. And here's the content from the website. Okay. And then add another step in Zapier to truncate the text. So we're going to use formatter by Zapier. Search formatter. So it looks like this. Go ahead and select that. And then the event, you're going to see a bunch of different options here. Select text since we are truncating text from the previous step. Select truncate in the transform field. What it does is it limits your text to a specific character length. And the reason we do this is because we don't want to send too much text to the ChatGPT API because it might reject the API request if we're over the limit. Uh, for the input, you want to select from step two, from step two parse article, you want to select uh, the content. So here, from step two, content. Uh, and I just set max length to 200,000 for now. And then append ellipses at the end. And go ahead and test this out. Uh, and then here's the inputs. Max length to add. This is pretty short, so I don't think it's going to truncate it. But it's good to have the safeguard in place so your API call doesn't fa fail. OK, great. We're going to send this text to ChatGPT. So go ahead and create another step in your zap to call ChatGPT. So what that looks like, just search ChatGPT. You'll see that, select it. Then for the event, we're going to choose conversation. So this sends a chat to OpenAI and generates a completion. OK, select conversation. Then go to your account. You're going to have to authenticate with your ChatGPT account since this is calling the uh, ChatGPT API. And if you don't know how to do that, just go ahead and like click connect a new account. And Zapier is going to ask for your API key and organization ID. So to get that, you uh, just click on this, like click on this link, create an API key, and it's going to take you to the dashboard where you can see your API keys and also see your organization ID. Okay. So once you paste those in, click yes, continue to ChatGPT to allow Zapier access to your ChatGPT account. And what's really cool is data sent through the Zap is using the API, and the open AI will not use API submitted data to train or improve their models unless you explicitly decide to share your data with them through opting in. So this is really awesome. OK, so now for the action step, what we want to do, the user message is this. So this is the input, and then you want to select the step three output. So this is the truncated article or blog post and we want to give it to ChatGPT through the user message. I use ChatGPT 4.0. I like the writing style better, but if you know cost is an issue, you can select one of these earlier models. So here in assistant instructions is where I put the actual prompt. I don't know why. I've just had better results putting like my super long prompt uh, as assistant instructions and then putting the input as the user message. Um, I just had better results that way, but you, you could totally just put this and the input content in the user message and that would work too. Um, in terms of where to get this prompt, so let me show you real quick uh, my website. I have a bunch of prompts here in my newsletter, sabrina.dev slash c slash prompts. Uh, also, you can just go to sabrina.dev and then hit prompts at the top, okay? And then I try to organize them. It's not perfect organization, but if you go to for content creators and then let's say write LinkedIn post with bullet point sections, this will take you to the prompt. So literally just copy paste this into the assistant instructions section and feel free to change this. I mean, like this is this really long section here are examples of LinkedIn posts that I like. You should totally change this so it makes sense for like your writing style and your industry as well. Uh, half of my examples uh, are AI related blog posts. So copy paste that in here and then max tokens. I set it to the maximum amount for GPT 4.0, which is uh, 4,096. And this is the maximum number of tokens it will generate in the output. Uh, for temperature, 
So higher values make the output more random, lower values make it more focused and determined. Uh, so this really depends on your use case and stuff, how much kind of creativity you want in there. I put it as 0.8, I'm pretty happy with that, but definitely play around with this and see the different results so you can, you can fine tune it for your use case. Okay, once you have everything set up, go ahead and test out this step. So the data in should look something like this. These are all the fields we filled out. And then the data out should be something like this. So the user request message, uh, this is the input. So this is the content or blog post that you're writing about. And then here's the reply. Now, if you scroll down to response, you'll see the reply. So blah, blah, blah. Here's how Zapier can transform your business here, here, here. Okay, so that's great. So now ChatGPT wrote us a really nice uh, LinkedIn post. The next step is to write a tweet as well. So it's basically the same as writing the LinkedIn post. So if you want, uh, the easiest thing, honestly, is to just duplicate it here, okay? And then all you're gonna change is uh, the assistance instructions. So for example, I have another prompt in my library to write a tweet. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste this long prompt, write a tweet. So copy paste that over here in the assistant instructions and you don't have to change anything else unless you want to. So tokens, temperature, you can leave all that the same. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this since I've already created the tweet step. So you can see what it looks like here. Um, I did reduce max tokens for the tweet just cause the tweet shouldn't be that long anyway, but I do have in the instructions, you know, to, to limit the, the number of characters anyway. Okay, so when you're done with that, go ahead and test this step. And similar to the previous step, um, you should see data out like this. And then here's the tweet. Scroll down to response and reply shows the tweet. Okay. And then the very last step, uh, what I like to do anyway, is to append this content to Google Sheets. And the reason I do that is just because I want to add like my own opinion, my own angle and edit the output. But that's personal preference. You know, if you are looking to automate this completely, uh, there are various options in Zapier here. For example, if you go to zapier.com slash app slash category social, these are all these Zapier integrations with social media apps. So you could take uh, this post and publish it directly to Facebook pages. You can actually publish directly to LinkedIn, directly to Reddit, uh, directly to Instagram. Uh, unfortunately, it does not have a uh, Twitter uh, social media integration anymore. So you would have to connect directly through the Twitter API to do that. But you, you definitely can do that in Zapier with an API call. Okay, so I like to append it to Google Sheets so I can kind of see everything there, edit everything there, make sure it's consistent before I push the content out. So go ahead and create a new step. Um, the app is Google Sheets. The event is create spreadsheet row. Okay, so connect your accounts. And then in the action tab, you know, choose the Google Drive where the spreadsheet is. So choose your spreadsheet, choose the worksheet there. And if you haven't already, like make sure you have a spreadsheet like this, it's, uh, mine's really simple, like the title of the article, the URL, the date that I'm finding it and running this, uh, not the date the article is written, but the date that I'm adding it to the spreadsheet, uh, then LinkedIn post and tweets. And if you're familiar with Zapier, you've probably used this step a bunch. So basically all you have to do is map the fields from the sheet and uh, just map it to what you want it to populate. So the, from the title, we'll get it from step two, parse article has a title. The URL will also get it from step two URL, okay? The dates here, I, I just put a Zapier created date and then I put my timestamp, so. So it looks like that. So instead of MST, you can put your time zone, like PST, EST. Uh, if you don't want it by time zone, just Google, you know, zap meta timestamp. And then you can also do zap meta human now is the other one. I just forgot it, so I Googled it. And then for the LinkedIn post, what you want to do is take, go to step four and get the reply. So this is the reply from ChatGPT when you ask ChatGPT to write you a LinkedIn post. Okay, so that's step four. And then similarly for the tweet, you wanna to go to step five, write the tweet, and then grab the reply. 
And I did change the names of these steps, so it's like easier to follow, you know? So I renamed this Zapier Chrome extension, parse, truncate article, chat GPT, write the LinkedIn post, chat GPT, write the tweet, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, um, so that's pretty much it. Click, Go ahead and click continue, and then you can test it out, and it should push it directly to your spreadsheet. So here's another example. So I was just looking at like AI news this morning. Apparently US officials uncovered a political bot farm. So let's go ahead and test out our zap with this. So click here to open the Chrome extension and then click send. And it's gonna be running through the entire workflow and populating the LinkedIn post and tweet right here in our Google Sheet. Okay, and there it is. So you, here's the title of the article, the URL, the date that I found it. And then here's the LinkedIn post. Um, AI is disinformation warfare, operation details, government response, impact. So I personally just love this layout for LinkedIn posts because it's really structured and easy to read. But again, you can change the prompt itself and tailor it to your writing style, your voice, um, and your use case, your audience, your niche. And here's the tweet. It's kind of long. I don't love this prompt for tweets, so I'm probably going to tweak that and update it. But anyway, this just goes to show you the entire workflow. So literally, I was just browsing the news this morning and I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. I might want to write about this. So then I just click boop, send, and then in probably 10, 15 seconds of waiting, it generates all this automatically. It's pretty much it in terms of the entire automation. So we went from the Chrome extension to parsing the article, truncating it, asking ChatGPT to write a bunch of stuff and appending to Google Sheets. Now let's say that instead of appending to Google Sheets, you wanna publish uh, directly to LinkedIn. So for example, let's do a LinkedIn step, app and events. So here in the events, you can uh, create a share update, which posts a status update sharing some content. And same for Facebook. Yeah, Facebook pages here. So here you can create a new page post, and this will post directly in your uh, Facebook page, your Facebook business page. Uh, unfortunately, it does not have a Twitter integration. That's the only thing that's, that's kind of annoying. But uh, if you use other apps like, uh, for example, Buffer to do your uh, social media management, then you can add it directly to the Buffer queue, which is great. And then another way to extend this is actually to create uh, an image. And another way to extend this is to uh, create an image. Let's say we uh, add another step for OpenAI, and then we want to generate an image with Dolly3, this event. If I go to action, so I the prompt here could be taking the LinkedIn post, for example, or taking the tweet, and then generating an associated image so that when you go to publish on these other platforms, you'll have an image with a post. Um, I personally don't do that just because I don't love seeing like content with AI generated images, unless the AI image it is part of the content itself. Like it's what the content is about. So this is more of a personal preference thing. I don't do this, but certainly you can do it with Zapier. So in this workflow, you would have uh, ChatGPT write the tweet and then call Dolly3 to generate an image that you can then push out with your LinkedIn update or with your Facebook post or with your tweet. So that's another way to extend this automation. And ultimately it's kind of why I'm stuck on using Zapier for my AI workflow automations because AI is obviously an important part of it. Uh, agentic design is an important part of it. But the other part that makes all of this really powerful is being able to link everything together in these seamless workflow automations. I've tried a bunch of different low code AI agent builder platforms, but at the end of the day, like the workflow component is so critical. Uh, like I don't want to be sitting here writing API calls to the, each of these. I'd rather just open up a zap and plug in a step and it's done. Yeah, that's ultimately why for now I'm using Zapier for uh, these AI powered automations, even though it it's a bit clunky if you want to introduce agentic design patterns. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope this is useful. If you have any questions for how to build this or tailor it for your specific use case needs, uh, just drop a comment below. And if you like this kind of stuff, I'm going to be making more content like this, showing how to build out AI powered systems and automations. So hit like, hit subscribe, and I look forward to hearing from you. Again, my name is Sabrina Romanov, and thanks for watching.